Looking at our weather on Friday, wildfire smoke spread south once again. 22 million acres across Canada have burned. And in the Pacific, Hurricane Calvin takes aim on Hawaii and should arrive there as a tropical storm. We'll cover the details in a bit. As far as our climate indexes, North Atlantic Oscillation still negative, helping to prolong the blocky flow. The western sky this evening, just above the setting sun, Venus, and just above that, Mars. And the morning sky, looking out to the east, Saturn up high in the southeast, and lower on the horizon, Jupiter and the Pleiades. And with the moon being low, this is going to be a good night to look at deep sky objects. There should be a nice dark sky tonight. There's our afternoon surface chart showing a fresh cold front, cold air advection, and air masses coming in from the northwest. And of course, with that, wildfire smoke. Much of North Dakota and Montana covered by smoke this afternoon. And we'll take a look at some graphics for that in just a little bit. We have a dry line across eastern New Mexico. This is pretty far west because we're getting into the second half of meteorological summer. And that means the tropical air mass, the moisture flowing further and further to the west and helping to bring the southwestern monsoon underway. Already, dew points are up into the 50s across much of Arizona and 55 there at El Paso. And some scattered showers starting to develop in that area. That's a look at some of that activity on satellite. Some very hot temperatures in the southwestern deserts. Up to 112 at Phoenix this afternoon, but at Nogales, they were up to 100 earlier. And this storm right here knocked it down 24 degrees to 76 Fahrenheit. There's how the temperatures look this afternoon. As we said, 112 at Phoenix, 108 at Las Vegas, 115 at Needles, and 112 at Palm Springs, not pictured here on the map. Slab City, I don't know if any of you have heard of that, on the east side of the Salton Sea. That was pictured in that movie, Into the Wild, back in the 2000s. That's it right there, Slab City, people living out of RVs and mobile homes. As far as I know, there's not any electricity there, and I really wonder how they deal with these 110 degree temperatures. That's it right there, looks like somebody's got solar panels. The interiors often look like this. I think that's probably one of the libraries there. Then, of course, further up to the north, we've got Death Valley. And we're looking at some serious heat there. The National Digital Forecast Database forecasting 124 at Death Valley for today, 129 for tomorrow, and 132 for Sunday. I'm not too sure if those temperatures verify but Sunday will come close to some all-time records throughout much of the southwest. And some of the temperatures that we may see on Sunday, 113 at Fresno and 117 at China Lake, located right there. However, those will not break all-time records. Elsewhere around the country, we've got a SPC marginal risk from the northeastern U.S. all the way down towards North Carolina, we have a flood watch posted for all of Connecticut, Rhode Island, western Massachusetts, and southern New York. Pretty much that area right there. Ground is already saturated, and that will amplify the runoff from those storms. And they're not going to be done this weekend. On Sunday, there's a WPC moderate risk for excessive rainfall. And that's going to cover New Hampshire all the way down through southern Vermont into southern New York. And that's a look at the radar as we record this. We'll go ahead and freeze that and look at the surface data. And you can see those dew points are way up there. 70 degrees up north of Saratoga Springs, New York. And yeah, 70s all the way down to New Jersey and across Connecticut. A very rich atmosphere. And you can see those precipitable water amounts up above one and a half inches. And there's a look at the moisture field, one kilometer off the ground. 
This is specific humidity, which is basically mixing ratio. And the thing to look for here is the moisture axis, which extends north along the coast. If we take a look at that scale up to the top, that's going to be 12 to 16 grams per kilogram. So what does that mean? Well, we can look at a real SKU-T diagram. That's what this is here. One kilometer is going to be right around 900 millibars. Down here, we've got the mixing ratio in grams per kilogram in green. So there's 12, there's 16. So that's going to intersect right about here. And basically, if we follow the brown lines down, that gives us dew points of about 58 to 68 Fahrenheit. So basically, those are 60s dew points. And those are not surface dew points. Those are dew points up at one kilometer. So quite a bit of moisture right there around the New York City area up to Massachusetts. There's the two kilometer moisture. Still quite a bit of it up there. Those are going to be 50s dew points. And there's the three kilometer moisture. So definitely quite a bit of depth. In the southeastern states, numerous storms from about Nashville down towards Mobile, Alabama. Flood watches are posted for parts of the central Florida Panhandle and central North Carolina. And flooding rains have been observed around Starkville, Mississippi, home of Mississippi State, a notable meteorology program there, and a university chase hub. And there's a look at the AWIPS radar, surface plots and precipitable water. Two-inch precipitable water line running right there through Alabama and some very cool temperatures in this rain-cooled air mass behind the complex. So that's a large pool of cold air helping to drive this system. So it's definitely an MCS. And looking further south into Florida, the flash flood watch is in this area right here. Not much going on at this time, but if we animate this, you can see some of those cells may be working down into that area. It does look like a lot of those storms will shut down after dark, kind of a quiet night, and then tomorrow morning, a complex gets going out around Apalachicola. In Texas, quiet conditions. There has been a buzz on social media about a death ridge next week. Well, we've got a death ridge right now. Things are shut down across Texas, and temperatures are well up into the 100s. And there you go. You can get a gander at that. 103 at San Antonio this afternoon, 102 at DFW, and a cool 96 at Houston. Some of the hottest temperatures in central Texas. We've got 107 at Mineral Wells. However, going up to the north, we have an enhanced risk for severe weather in Kansas and parts of northern Oklahoma. And an MCS stretching from about Topeka down to just south of Wichita. Back behind it, a very large cold pool. Temperatures as low as 71 degrees from Manhattan down to Hutchinson. Down to the south, a boundary from about Elkhart stretching back along that MCS and then leading up into Iowa. And that demarcates the cooler air and postfrontal air mass from the hot temperatures down to the south. Now, typically, when we have high instability days like this, people start thinking about El Reno and Jarrell. And those were high instability events, but those are somewhat anomalous. One important factor is how much of a cold pool the system is laying down. I can see that there is a cold pool or an outflow boundary out ahead of it right there. So these are a little bit outflow dominant. See the distance between the cells in that outflow boundary. Not sure what it's like out here, but that convex appearance tells me that this is outflow driven. Now, another factor is the LCLs and the relative humidities. You can assess that looking at the surface plots and just looking at the difference between the temperature and dew point. That appears to be running about 15 to 20 degrees on average, which is not bad. Generally, when you start getting above 20, that indicates the LCLs are going to be a bit too high. But today, they're looking like this. And there is an axis of about 1,000 
meter LCLs, which is definitely on the favorable side. So on a day like this, I might be starting to think of something like Joplin that tornado day. Although, again, that was kind of an ex exceptional event. So you want to look at all the factors. And I don't think with the Joplin day, we had this big outflow driven system. And you definitely have to look at all these indicators and look at some of the forecast QTs. Let's take a sample right out ahead of this complex, look at the sounding, and it's going to look like this. So we do see that there's not really very much shear. And of course, in a high instability environment, you don't need a whole lot of shear. LCLs, those are not too bad. CAPE, definitely up there, 4,500 for the surface-based CAPE the most unstable up to 4,500. So what are we missing? Well, you can look over here for a quick cheat sheet. And this is showing the SRH is not all that great. And the D-capes, that's going to be right here, 1,400. That's pretty high. So that points to more outflow-driven type convection. And definitely some very vigorous convection out there. You can see that outflow boundary starting to move across the border towards Alva and towards Slapout. So the strongest cells located right here, there's a few strong embedded cells further to the east, and we've got this new tower out to the west. So as we mentioned, all these cells are being driven southeastward by a cold pool, and they are being undercut to a certain extent. However, any cells that strengthen do have the potential to become severe and produce supercell structures and tornadoes. But as I mentioned, not really seeing anything like that right now. And with the moist sector being somewhat homogenous, I think this is a good product for outlining the highest threat area. These are LCLs once again, and that focuses on that axis right there. So anywhere down towards Bartlesville and Tulsa, will probably have the best severe weather potential. As you get out east, much higher LCLs, but there can still be a pretty strong threat of wind damage. And of course, a threat for large hail as well, because with a drier environment, your wet bulb temperatures are lower, which means large hail can make it down to the ground a lot easier. And as we mentioned, up to the north, wildfire smoke flooding in from Alberta and Saskatchewan. And that's a look at these smoke products from the NOAA Office of Satellite and Product Operations coming from these wildfires across Northwest Territories down to British Columbia. And we're going to see that smoke plume continuing to surge southeast and a secondary plume coming down tomorrow into North Dakota. So, yeah, 900 wildfires burning across Canada this afternoon. 570 are out of control 22 million acres destroyed, and the worst fire season since 1989. In fact, this year has beaten that record. And shifting gears into the tropics, we do have Tropical Storm Dawn way out there in the Atlantic. That is not really a threat, just mostly remaining out over the high seas. Over the seven-day forecast, though, they're not looking for any development. However, if we switch to the GFS... We do see some changes going on. Now, the intertropical convergence zone located right through here, that's going to be the focus for tropical development. And it looks like as we get into later next week, that's kind of a ways off there. It is kind of stormy off of Cape Verde, off of Senegal. And we finally start getting a few closed lows there around the 22nd and 23rd. Still too far out to assess what those are going to do. But there's one right there on the 24th, so we'll just have to monitor that over the next week. And out in the Pacific, we've got Hurricane Calvin, a Category 3 storm up to 110 knots, 125 miles an hour, sustained wind, and that will be moving out to the west. The intensity has pretty much peaked, and we're going to see a slow decline over the weekend. However, the models have been very, very consistent about bringing this into Hawaii. So we're now looking at Tuesday night or Wednesday, and that's it right there. There is still going to be a residual circulation with that coming into maybe the big island, 
as a tropical storm. Looks like 35 to 45 knot winds with that. However, cooler sea surface temperatures, higher shear, and dry mid-level air will be acting to weaken that storm as it approaches Hawaii. Still some very high precipitable water. So as the storm moves westward, it will hit Hawaii with a shield of 2-inch precipitable water. And that is pretty significant. So there's definitely going to be flash flood potential. And with that residual wind field, there could be some scattered power outages. Fortunately, it will be passing through pretty quickly, and that'll probably limit the scale of any damage. And as far as the heat wave and the upper level ridge, well, that's it right there, centered on Southern California, extending into Texas. And as we get into the hottest day on Sunday, that's what the map's going to look like. 600 decameters, very rare, across Southern Nevada. And then as we go into Monday and Tuesday, it wobbles around, moves into New Mexico, reaches into Texas a little bit. However, not much change over next week. Looks like a continuation of hot weather. However, I'm not really seeing any extreme heat past Sunday. So we'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens. And I guess I should give you a look at the jet stream there. A little bit of a split flow pattern. One segment across Wyoming, Idaho, and merging up into the southern segment across the Midwest. And looking at conditions over the next week, well, ridging on the West Coast, a little bit of strong jet stream energy coming into the Midwest around Tuesday, so that could increase the severe weather potential Monday and Tuesday. Then some boring weather through the rest of the week. Ridge builds once again. That could be kind of hot going into the 23rd. That's a very high amplitude pattern. When we get these high amplitude patterns, that's when we can get into some anomalous weather. So we'll see what happens as we get into next week. And that's it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our newest Patreon supporters, Ginger, Missy Westland, and Travis. Thank you very much for your support. I'm going to leave you with some more of that great footage from Greg taken out there in the hill country. We'll see you back here once again next week on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Stay safe, stay cool, and we'll see you in a couple days. Bye-bye.